Matthew chapter 18, verse 16, I see. Verse 15, let's see. Okay, moreover, if your brother shall trespass against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he shall hear you, you have gained your brother. So, if your brother shall trespass against you, the Bible says that you should go and meet your brother. Talk to your brother. And if your brother listens and takes your word and makes amend, you have gained your brother. Next verse. But if he will not hear you, then take with you one or two more. So come. Sister, please come. So, bro, come. Go that way a little bit. So, I have gone to this, my brother. And I've said to him that the eye you were cutting me when I was preaching, I didn't like it. You can't just be cutting me eye when I'm preaching like that. And that thing you did, it almost brought me into the flesh out of the spirit. Because... In our family, the way God made us, we don't used to like when we are doing something and somebody's cutting eye for us. And then he now laughs the way he's laughing <laughs> and refuses to apologize. The Bible says, I can now go and take one, eh? if he will not hear you, take with you one or two more. So, can you follow me? So we now come. Before we arrive, we are started laughing again. So while we are even still on the way, the brother that offended me starts to laugh again. And I'll say, you see, this was what I told you before we're coming. He's now doing it in your presence. One or two more that in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established that I made attempt to resolve matters with him, he refused. Now I have one or two other people joining me. So if it was only one, there'll be two of us now as witnesses. If it was two of them, it would be three of us that would be witnesses so that the matter may be established. Let's go back to that our corner. Let's leave this brother that will not hear us. Now, and if he shall neglect to hear them, that's the witnesses, the two brothers you have brought. If he neglect to hear them, you cannot tell it unto the church. So church, help us look at this matter now. All right? This is the matter. And if you neglect to hear the church because he's still laughing, even now that I've reported to you people, you see he's still laughing. Now, if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto you as a heathen, as a gentle man, and a publican. Let, let him be like Zacchaeus before his encounter. Verse 18. Verily I say unto you, whatsoever you shall bind on earth. So when we excommunicated this brother, huh? the Bible is, is follow up from that place because most times we start this passage from verse 18. So this is a con the context is that I want you to know that the reason why this thing is like this is because whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. So when the church looked into the matter and said, bro, we pronounce you a hidden, you are like a publican from this day. Heaven, heaven will write it so. Because whatsoever we, the church, Whatever we bind on earth is bound in heaven. How can it be so? You, maybe you didn't get something here. The binding is starting from the earth. It's not whatever we bind in heaven is bound on earth. God is, Jesus is saying that if we, if we say, well, we, we, we say like you, still be part of us. Heaven will write it so. 
but our command is to excommunicate him. And when we do so, heaven will write it so. Because whatsoever, do you know the meaning of whatsoever? Whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever, whatever you shall lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. In the Lord's Prayer, he taught us to pray, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Always to say that the heaven has the superiority over the earth. Actually, on the life you live on the earth should be you trying to live a life that is in accordance with the reality and the purposes of the God of heaven that is for you. Because God told Jeremiah that before I formed you, I knew you. And before you came forth out of your mother's womb, I ordained you a prophet unto the nation. Ladies and gentlemen, there is something that is written concerning you already in the volume of the books. And your life on earth is supposed to be a continual attempt at living out your reality that is captured with God who is in heaven. Therefore, the earth is supposed to take a cue from the heaven always except in this prayer matter. Suddenly, Jesus reverses the protocol. He reverses the procedure and says, in this case, whatever you bind on earth, heaven will bind it. And if you lose it here, we will lose it there. Binding and losing, while you may apply it to your deliverance exercises, I want you to know that at its core, primarily, I'm not saying you can't apply it that way, but you need to understand what it meant originally and what it meant in context that you are now trying to stretch in application. And we do that all the time. But we need to know what we are doing. It's like what I was doing in the morning. You remember? In the morning, I was using physical locations of looking at the place, of getting to the place, of entering into your chamber uh, or your closet and shutting the door. I was using those physical language and I said to you that I know what is going on here but I am applying it, I'm going one step behind in order to bring a certain legitimate application also. Remember I said so? Now, so I'm not saying that you cannot apply losing and binding to the devil. No, I don't want to argue that, that this evening. You can say Satan, we bind you or, you know, lose. No problem. However, the context of Matthew 18 is that as the church, anything we, anything that we proscribe, that means anything that we forbid is forbidding, is written as forbidding in heaven. Anything we allow, that is the language of binding and losing. It is the language of legitimizing and delegitimizing. It's a legal word. It's the language of acquitting. Anything we acquit, if we allow it, it is allowed. That's what it means to lose. If we disallow it, it is disallowed. That is what it means to bind. The church was performing that same kind of function in Acts chapter 15 when the Gentiles were being troubled by a certain category of the church to say, if you are a Gentile and you become born again, you need to be circumcised again. You need to keep certain aspects of the Mosaic law. The church in Jerusalem sat in council and what they did is further utilization of this grant that Jesus gave to the church. If you allow it, it's allowed in heaven. If you disallow it, it's disallowed by heaven. And so when they finally came to a conclusion after talking back and forth, they wrote a letter and said it has pleased the Holy Spirit and us to lay no other burden upon you Gentiles except these. That you abstain from food or fat or idols, that you abstain from blood, from fornication, and co and co. But circumcision is not required. And they, when they finished the meeting, the letter they wrote, they wrote it as proceeding from them and the Holy Spirit. In the deliberation in that meeting, there was no point that you heard the Holy Spirit's impute. But the conclusion, the Holy Spirit's name was appended to it to say this is the position that we 
and the Holy Spirit have taken on the matter. For it seemed good to the Holy Ghost and to us to lay no greater burden than these necessary things. Verse 29, they are what? That you abstain from meat offered to idols and from blood and from things strangled and from fornication, from which if you keep yourselves, you shall do well. Fare ye well. When they were writing the letter, they even mentioned Holy Ghost before themselves. Meanwhile, they were the ones that did the deliberation. There was no point that the Holy Spirit thundered into the room and said, my children, my children, my children, my children. Group A, you are right. Group B, I forgive you. Then you now say, the Holy Spirit has given a verdict. And then you write the letter and say, please, the Holy Spirit and us. No. So, the power, back to 18, Matthew 18. So, the power that God gives to us as a church to bind and to lose is a powerful one because it says whatsoever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatsoever you lose on earth is lose in heaven. This is why sometimes when we gather as a church, you will see, we will say, let us pray that these evil people, they will never succeed in our land. In fact, sometimes we say, let's turn to us, uh, le le let's turn to us the northwest. Hmm? Say, that man that has been troubling the church, that short man that has been troubling the church, we, we just come short of calling his name. Then we say, let us give him 14 days ultimatum. If he does not reverse that he did, he will die. And then we will jump, we will pray, we shout, hey, I come up, quick, quick, quick. Meanwhile, there's, there are some persons there that their uncles, uh, senior special assistant, um, SSG's uh, relations, and they say it's now that it's our own turn, that God wants to pick our phone call. Now they want to kill the man. You see, they are with us in one place, but we are not in one accord. That's one matter first. But the matter is deeper than that. Because you wonder why it is sometimes that we pray certain prayer with full zeal, energy, and conviction as a corporate people, and we don't see the result. Yet, Jesus says, Verily I say unto you, whatsoever. What does whatsoever mean? It means whatsoever. Anything at all. Whatsoever. You shall bind on earth, oh my, shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you shall lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Verse 19. Again, I say unto you that if two of you, if two of you shall agree on earth as touching that they ask, as touching anything that they ask, get this now before we pray. So, he says, you see two of you. Hmm? The two of you that I took as witnesses. Jesus says, apart from the power he's given to the church that we reported to, he is boiling it down to the most basic level of corporate prayer enterprise. Because the most basic level of the definition of a church is a called out people. Two qualifies. So again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, and I've often said that the agreement is not agreeing to ask. It is agreeing as touching the thing that you are asking. That time that we said, let us pray that the person that is fighting against the church, let him repent or die after 14 days. The issue may be that both of you agreed to ask on that matter. But you did not agree as touching the matter you were asking. Agreeing to ask is not the same thing as agreeing as touching the matter. Being in one accord, which is the crux here, is that they are in agreement of mind. You remember that's how it, it was said? So the mind need to agree. 
If you do not agree as touching the issue you are asking, just agreeing to ask will not cut it. So, this, this sister now can tell this brother, say, bro, there's this, uh, I use this example a lot too. There's this overseas scholarship that I applied for. Let's assume both of them are serving together national youth service and they have just like one month to finish. And this sister tells the brother, I say, bro, please, I need you to agree with me in prayer. There's this scholarship I applied for. It's fully funded. Uh, it will take me to Canada. And I actually hope that once I get it and I go, this is my country, I'm not coming back. But that's not the point. The point is I want to get the scholarship. Please agree with me in prayer. Then the brother, in order not to appear not to be a brother, we say, oh, wow, that's wonderful. Hey, wow, I, I, I thank God for you. I hope that this really works out. That's what the mouth is saying. But the heart is saying, eh. So this said, all of us have been doing prayer meeting, prayer meeting. You have been doing application behind our back. It is now that the application has been done and the time has passed. When it's time for prayer now, you now think that we are qualified to hear. But when the opportunity came, you didn't think it was important to notify the rest of us because we now we are condemned to living in Nigeria because you don't think that we, we want to go to Canada. So it's only prayer point you are bringing. When opportunity came, you didn't bring that one. So, but it's not from my mouth that they will hear that I'm not a brother. So since you say I should pray with you, what will I do? We'll pray, say, hey, please, let's hold hands, let's hold hands. Hold hands now, hold hands. You even hold hands, so. Eh? All you did here is you agreed to pray. You did not agree as touching what you are praying. So this brother, you say, Father, we thank you because you do all things. That's what the mouth is saying. Eh? Please, this scholarship, please make it happen, make it happen, make it happen. In Jesus' name. The sister, we say amen. And he say, I'm, ah, I, I really thank you for your time. I thank you for all of that. In the heart of the brother, the brother is nursing a grudge against the sister while he is praying with the sister. Jesus says, again I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything, you agree as touching the thing that you ask. It's not if any, of, if any two of you shall agree on earth to ask. No, it is agreeing on earth as touching anything that they shall ask. Your agreement has to touch what you are asking. Your agreement has to touch the thing you are asking about. If you don't agree touching the thing, you only agreed to touch hands, to hold hands, it will not be done of my father which is in heaven. So this is condition two. And this condition is hinged upon that one accord is the unity of heart. The agreement of heart. This is why corporate prayer is such a sensitive thing. It, it is only dead people that can do corporate prayer. It, when you come into corporate prayer, you need to subordinate your personal agenda, your personal idea, your personal inclinations, your personal idiosyncrasies, your personal philosophy, your personal lives, and your personal preferences to say the person that is vested with the, uh, uh, the responsibility of leadership will be bringing to us the mind of God on the matter. Remember, in Acts chapter 15, after that deliberation was done, there was no decent judgment. To say, well, that later, uh, that's the majority position, but we want to put it on record that there are some of us that still believe that your salvation is not pure if you are not circumcised as a Gentile. We just, you know, when you go to the Supreme Court and the judgment is not unanimous, there will be what? What do you call it? There's a dissent. There's a dissent judgment. A dissent. That dissent judgment is written by one of the judges that took a different position from the position of the majority. It is just so that everybody will have their day in court to say everybody will have his say even though it is a majority that will take the day it, it will just be on record 
that we did not agree with this thing, but because they are more than us, that's what is going to happen. But we want you to know that we did not agree. When you are doing legislative business in your national house, houses of assembly, on your legislative uh, 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 arms of your national expression of political governance or state governance or county and all of that, a simple majority sometimes will be enough. Sometimes a two-third majority is required depending on what you want to do. Do you know the requirement in our own legislature? Because the church is God's legislative arm on the face of the earth. And our requirement in this legislature is 100%. They were, with, with, they were all in one accord. Not mostly. That is why one Achan can bring down the effort of an entire nation. Because in this formation, if everybody is not in array, the brilliance of our God cannot be found in our midst. One dissenting voice is bad enough. Hmm? A little fully is a dangerous thing. Is as the as dead flies cause the oil. The, pot, the box of a pot carry to give forth a stinking smell. So is he that is held in honor for wisdom. It's like a drop of sniper. Huh? A drop of sniper in a hundred liter uh, tank of water. That water is no longer pure water. There is death in it. As far as this assembly is concerned, we need to be all with one accord. That's why I say that only dead people can do corporate praying. When matters happen that you are very passionate about, it even, the, demand, the requirement for death becomes even more stringent. So you realize that in that 2015 election period, the friendships ended. Friends, gospel ministers that had been friends for 30 years, for 20 years, they went their separate ways because one person said Buhari is the next thing after sliced bread to have ever happened to Nigeria. Another person is saying that, you know, we are not saying Jonathan is a brilliant leader, but Jonathan is head and shoulder better than Buhari. Let's not go that way. Let's not go that way. And believers that have done ministry together for three decades, a wedge came between them. And they will no longer call one another. They will no longer do ministry and life together because they are divided over Buhari and Jonathan. That division that happened in the church in 2015, I've never seen it that bad in all my life as a Nigerian. And I can bet you it was at the foundation of the, the anomaly that has been visited upon us. So when 2019 was coming, and we're all praying, and we're praying, I say, God, what is going on? God simply, God said to me, 2019 will be a further consequence of the choices that Nigerians made in 2015. Those of you that follow me online, you know I said it. And people were angry because God told this one that you are going to be our next president. God told them you are going to be the next president. I said, okay. You need to understand that actions have consequences. This, this thing we are inside as a nation. The church brought us here. I'm, I'm giving you the practical implications of what happens when you are in different accords and you are trying to pray. For corporate prayer to be effective, you have to be in one accord. Even if you are in 20 places, you must be in one accord. Because that is the expl explanation here. That anything, if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. Why? Finally, verse 20. The reason is because, verse 20, for where two or three are gathered together in my name. The reason why, verily I say unto you, 
that whatsoever you shall bind on it, if you shall bind anything on the earth, it is bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on it is lose in heaven. And again I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask of my father, as touching anything they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my father, which is in heaven, is because, is because, the reason why those things are true is because where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. This is why it looks as if he was making the, the exception of the rule of heaven and earth such that heaven or the earth will originate it and the heaven will agree with it. The heaven will simply affirm it. The heaven will simply approve it. Why? The reason is because anywhere that two or three are gathered together in my name, I am not just uh, aware of their gathering. He said, there, there, there am I. How? In the midst of them. So they are gathered in my name. The name of the Lord is the infrastructure. Is a circumference, is the perimeter wall of the meeting. But the name of the Lord is not the only location. So he says, for where, the first where is where, it does anywhere, it's geography. Where can be Villa Grand? Where can be under the mango tree? Where can be under that tent we did one of the days of our last conference? Where can be in Tanzania? It can be in Pangshin, it can be anywhere. Where is where? It can be a house, it can be outdoor, it can be by the riverside, where two or three are gathered together in my name. The, the location that is a constant is my name. That no matter where you gather, make sure that in that place you are also in my name. So where two or three are gathered together in my name. So when we gathered here, if the only location that identifies our gathering is this hall, we are in error. Those provisions that were made for us in the 18th verse will not be applicable. In the 19th verse, will not be applicable. Because verse 20 is the explanation of the preceding verses. That's the word for. The word for them means because... It is giving you the justification, the reason for the former allowances or provisions that have been made. Why, if we bind anything on earth, it's bound in heaven. If we lose on earth, it's losing heaven. If two of us agree as touching anything that we shall ask, the Father will grant it to us. It's because anywhere that two or three people are gathered together inside my name, me, I am there in the middle of them. That means that the name of Jesus is outside, all right? And the person of Jesus is inside. And if Jesus Christ is in the midst, I want you to know that he does not come into our midst as an observer. He is in the midst as the Lord. The Bible calls him the head of the body. He is the Lord of the church. If Jesus is in our midst, he's in our midst as the Lord. The Lord is the leader. He's our head. He's our captain. He's our leader. He's our director. That means the person of Jesus in our midst will be the speaking, moving, ordering, animating reality that gives direction and motion and purpose to our gathering. He said, it is good for you that I go. Because if I do not go, the comforter will not come. Another time he said, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. How did he come? He came in the person of the Holy Spirit. Because he said, I will send the comforter and he will take of that which is mine and he will show it to you. The Bible says that your body is the temple of the living God and God dwells in you by his Holy Spirit. When we say God lives in my heart, how does God live in my heart? God lives in my heart by 
His Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit of God is the administrator of the estate of Jesus. That means the Holy Spirit comes as the representative of Jesus. The Holy Spirit comes to stand in the place of Jesus. That's why Jesus said he will not speak of himself. The exact thing that I would have been doing if I was physically here, that is the exact thing the Holy Spirit will be doing when I send him here. This is why you will not miss me, because I will come to you. But the beauty of that is that while I'm here like this, I have to be physically restricted to one geography. So if people are gathered in Capernaum and I'm in Capernaum and another set is gathered in Samaria, if I'm in Capernaum, I cannot be in Samaria. But it, therefore, it is good for you that I go. Because when I go, I will alter, I will change my mode of revelation and appearance and presence to you. I will now come in the person of the Holy Spirit so that whether people are gathered in two billion places at the same time, each of them will be relating with the same reality that is the Christ. I will be in the midst of them so that if Jesus is in the midst of us as the Lord, he is the one that guides, that directs, that orders our meeting. The prayer points that are rising from our assembly, they are not the result of the personal reflection of the prayer leader, but they are the result of the prayer leader listening to the Lord that is in our midst. If your prayer point came out of the heart of Jesus, when it ascends to the heaven, Jesus is the son to whom the father cannot say no. This is why prayer can rise from the earth and the heaven will rubber stamp it. It's because of this dynamic. The prayer did not have its origin in the carnal intuitions of men. It has its origin in the spirit that animates our gathering. He is Lord over all. So that spirit that is in our midst, the Jesus that is in our midst by his spirit, you know, the Bible says that he that knows the mind of the spirit. Huh? In fact, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit makes intercession for us according to the will of God. Why? Because he is the one that searches all things. He knows the mind of God. So, the Holy Spirit knows the mind of God. He knows the will of God. When you are praying as led by the Holy Spirit, you cannot pray wrong. That is not a prayer that God can say no. Why? Because the Holy Spirit fetches it out of the heart of God in terms of fetching it out of the will of God and he reveals it to you so you can express it to God as prayer. If you are asking God to do something that God has designed to do, why will God not do it? How will you know to ask God what God has already designed to do? It's by submitting your prayers, your, the leadership of your prayer, to the leadership of the Holy Spirit. It is the reason why sometimes when you come to prayer, even as a personal endeavor, you notice you had 12 items on your prayer list you wanted to talk to God about. And then you came. You started praying, and your mind kept going to Reverend Gideon. Reverend, you say, okay, Father, I want you to bless Reverend Gideon or wherever he is. And you know, after tonight, God is going to be doing this thing I'm just saying now. Very, very, very well. I want you to bless Reverend Gideon wherever he is. And then you, uh, uh, you pray for like two minutes. It's not the Reverend Gideon prayer does not want to leave. You pray, you continue, okay. Let me be obedient. Five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. You say, God! <laughs> See my prayer point. I have a prayer list here. 15 minutes for Reverend Gideon alone. Have I not tried? How am I going to attend to the other 12 items? And sometimes he will keep you there for one hour, Reverend Gideon. Yes. This thing now will haunt you after tonight, Reverend Gideon. The reason is because when you come to that place, you are responding to a summon. And when you respond to a summon, the person who summoned you is the one with the agenda of the meeting. If God called the meeting, then God is the one with the agenda of the meeting. I'm not saying you should not go there with your prayer point. 
It is what is on your prayer point that is on God's will that will happen that day. You just go and say, okay, okay. Our 12 things is like only two of them were <laughs> on his own list. So those were the two things that happened. One of the things, however, that you will notice is when you start to pray in this kind of ordered fashion, you will see God walking beautifully around you to take care of even things you eventually did not have opportunity to lay out before the Lord as items of prayer because part of the purpose of prayer is not really that your list. It is a, an organic life that God is trying to build between himself and you. I've talked too much already tonight. But... Do you get the point I've made so far? I'm trying to teach you a little bit of body life as it has to do with the spirit of prayer. That there is a spirit in our midst when we gather as God's people. That's why sometimes when we, when we come for prayer meeting and we say, let us pray, particularly those of us that pray in the spirit, those of us that pray in tongues, I mean to say, it's one asset that I don't think we value enough. But if I, I don't want to follow that rail now because I've already overshot my time. So what we want to do tonight, huh? what we want to do tonight as the practical of my little lecture tonight is that we're going to pray over our city. I'm trying to give a prayer point that I hope that there will be the least requirement for you to die in order to pray. I want to also pray for our city this city. And what we want to call over our city is revival. We are going to say, let revival hit the plateau. If you are in Johannesburg, that's the city you are praying about. If you are in Ijesha, in Lagos, pray for Lagos. Huh? If you are joining us from Berlin, pray for Berlin. Pray for your city. And if, for those of us that are corporate people here, we are going to be praying as a corporate house. And our prayer tonight is revive revive, revive our city. We want revival to hit this city. That's the only prayer point and then I will pray for the sick. Let us pray. Revive! As a church we are asking for revival upon our city. Let the days 